So Nate Wants to Battle recently announced that he is no longer making fandom-inspired music. So what are we here to do? We're here to celebrate his fandom-inspired music and his more popular stuff, the Five Nights at Freddy's songs. Now, um, I'm not a Roo. I understand that, especially with his last song, Leave Me Behind, it's all about the fact that people kind of established, like, I thought that FNAF music was Nate's legacy, and he doesn't want that to be the case. And I agree, he is much more than just Five Nights at Freddy's. I have both of his original albums and many of his CDs, in fact. Um, but we are here regardless because we are, well, two of us are big fans of the FNAF series, but all three of us are fans. I can hear my niece giggling in the background, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can hear her. I can hear her too. That's fine. Um, but all of us are fans of Nate Wants to Battle. And I'm here today with two special guests, one of which has been on the channel before. The other one has made the artwork that you see in the thumbnail of me. So I would like to introduce you both to Sir Tamachi and Moodle the Noodle, or Ollie and Moosh. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for coming along. How are you guys doing? Yeah, are you good. Ready for some special, awesome rock music and whatnot. Definitely, definitely. I just finished the video for Leave Me Behind, so I just had the Spotify on, so I can remember how the songs, the new songs go. Anyway, I've listened to the old ones a million times, but yeah. How long have you guys been uh, fans of Now What's the Battle for? Two thousand and fourteen. Both of you? Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. Because awesome. I, I found Nate and then showed Moosh, because it was... I his... was going to say, like, five years. I didn't realise it had been that long. <laughs> yeah, no, because he did... When he Demons used to do the parody, the one... The that was the first one you showed me, the fairy tale yeah. one, yeah. His fairy from tale that parody. Wow. Even mm. back to the parody days. Like, that's... Yeah. That's, that's yeah. ancient. They were my some of my favourites. Like, I had uh, Blink... Mm -hmm. Space in my playlist for eight. I don't know why I don't have it in there anymore. Actually, I think I just deleted everything. But yeah, that was my favorite song for ages. I reckon. Wow, well that's really good. Like I've been only a fan of him since I want to say 2016. Um, mm. I talked about it in actually uh, one of our previous videos. I'm gonna plug a few videos here before we actually get going because uh, mm -hmm. I've talked about FNAF quite a little bit actually. Um, but yeah, around 2016, I uh, enjoyed the show, uh, featuring Jacksepticeye, probably because I was a, I did watch Jacksepticeye around the time, and then I saw it he was, was in the song. It was so, a huge Jack fan as well. Yeah, so, yeah. um, I just, yeah, I, I listened to that song, and, uh, from there I've been a fan of Nate. And, um, yeah, I've actually talked about him before, we, uh, Ollie was in a review with, uh, me and Gus for the, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Ultimate Collection by Nate. Uh, we did something quite similar, and um, I've also played Sister Location with a friend of mine, Callum. Uh, that's an older video, and Gus and I have done a podcast on Five Nights at Freddy's when Scott Cawthon announced his retirement. Um, but today we are here to do a tier list. That's right, we are, well, I am at the very least turning into a very typical uh, YouTuber who does <laughs> tier lists. Um, I'm not really, I'm not really, this is my first time doing it, I had to make this tier list of um, all of the Name Wants to Battle Five Nights at Freddy's songs, uh, not including the acoustics, we're going to lump that in, the acoustics in with the original song. So all in all, 21 songs. Um, I made a Name Wants to Battle Five Nights at Freddy's songs playlist because his own playlist on his account on Spotify isn't updated. So until it is updated with every single song, I will keep my playlist here. And when he, if he does do so eventually, I will delete my playlists. Just, it just bugged me that not every song was there, so I made my own. Um, so yes, we have five tiers here. We, the three of us will deliberate on where to pl place the songs on the tier list. Top tier slash the best, very good. All right, not very good, and bottom tier slash the worst. So, um, all right. I hope you guys are ready, and yeah. uh, let's get started. We're gonna go in a reverse chronological, uh, reverse chronological. So we're starting with the newest song, "Leave Me Behind." 
So Leave Me Behind featuring Cam Steady. I'm not a normal Cam Steady fan, I have heard a few of his songs. He uh, played a good, interesting role in this song though. Leave Me Behind certainly feels like it's not actually a FNAF song in a way. The lyrics kind of embody just his rivalry with the fandom almost, and his uh, the now like new decision to not continue making fandom inspired music he wants to branch out and do his own thing uh did either of you actually watch the announcement video he made saying he's not going to make fandom inspired stuff um was no. it on youtube or twitter youtube i think oh. i might have he might have put it on twitter as well but no i was gonna say if it's on twitter i don't use twitter so mm -hmm. uh, i, I just i found no. out from you so yeah, he basically. Uh, I found out when you did the intro. So. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, no, he yeah. he he basically made a video just saying that yeah he's been doing this thing for years and he's built up like this this company this brand of Give Hard Productions, but he is not feeling inspired to do fandom inspired stuff anymore. <laughs> he wants to do purely original stuff. So. This album, uh, Scrap Heap, is just a collection of his newest and last Phantom Inspired stuff, five or, five or six of the songs being FNAF, and yeah. um, and he's probably, I think from the sounds of it, looks of it, he's gonna take a break, and then maybe return as, like, he, he literally, the video starts with, this might be the last Nate wants to battle music for a while. Hello, cat. So, um, <laughs> this is Coco. Hello, Coco. We'll probably come in and out of the video. That that is fine. That is absolutely fine. But um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, I'm not even predicting that when he does come back, he might even just come back as Nathan Sharp because once the battle is a thing from Pokemon. So, mm. if I he thought wants... he was Nathan Sharp. He like, is Nathan. He had been for a little while. I mean, no, I know that's his name, but like, I don't think uh, so. He... He did think... change his YouTube channel to Nathan Sharp. No, he um he had two channels. His main channel he changed to Give Heart Productions, and his second channel he changed to Nate Wants to Battle, and that was originally oh, okay. th that was originally <clears throat> something else, but it wasn't Nathan Sharp. But uh, <coughs> that's kind of the prediction I got yeah. that he's gonna change mm. to just Nathan Sharp in the future. Yeah. But um, it yeah, who, makes, who knows? It makes sense. Um. With Leave Me Behind, I feel like it's also how a lot of people also feel about freaking Five Nights at Freddy's. Because it's like, mm. it's ended! Oh look, here's another one. It's ending! Here's it's another en one! <laughs> it's ended like four times. That's that's what I've gotten <laughs> for, like, from the lyrics. Like, it's mm. also Nate mm. being like, bye, but also like, people who are a fan of the series itself like there's never a cohesive ending for any of the games so mm -hmm. i like that i like this because i feel like it's especially with um how security breach came out and ended very strangely confused confusingly yeah, yeah. um I just got the. I was like struggling to get the this lyrics is... up on Spotify, so I just got oh. them up. I see what you guys mean with the yeah. lyrics now. Yeah. So it's like with like with security breach, the ending and the whole game itself was just like, oh, what the hell's going on? Mm. So this song, I really like. It's like a basic, sort of like a F you without being yeah. a full F you. The one one thing I noticed was that um. It felt like Cam Steady's lyrics were from the point of view of Nate, where mm. Nate was just singing. Like one, one thing I do notice, I, I tried to find this reference. It was in one of the FNAF videos I mentioned involving Gus. He made a point that a lot of the earlier Five Nights at Freddy's songs uh, sounded like he, list, he watched a Game Theory video on it, and then took those ideas and turned them in the lyrics. Yeah, oh, and I yeah. watched all the game theory. Sorry, I'm not like a big Five Nights at Freddy's fan. Mostly because animatronics scare me in real life. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably enough. the main reason, but I did, I watched all the original, um, 
oh what's it called game theory videos on it and they were really interesting yeah mm. but yeah it does seem uh, like the creator did also I was just trying to screw with map pat for a while with the games uh, oh, whether, inten whether, whether intentionally or not but he did interact yeah. with map pat quite a lot but in the latter half like all of these latest newer songs they all feel like either a reference to, like, they reference Security Breach or, like, William Afton or The Hell or whatever, or they reference Nate's older songs, which yeah. there are many, many references to the older songs in this with the lyrics, like, yeah. like a burnt up and a mangled, and, like, yeah. he, he says a lot of... Was it? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, mm. th this is kind of the, yeah, the swan mm -hmm. song of the Five Nights at Freddy's songs you made, and I think it's really good. The one thing we do have to point out, though, I also like listening to the instrumentals. I heavily focus on the instrumentals of songs, and then I focus mm. on the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it's really hard to contribute all of the instrumental, instrumental like parts of the songs to Nate, because in reality, it's actually Sean Christmas. Uh, he kind of produces and does all of the instrumentals and everything. Like, Nate can play instruments, but oh, yeah. Sean yeah. Christmas does literally all of it now for, like, Name Was the Battle, Amelie, and um, Boy Hero, and stuff like that. He literally does, like, all of it. So, um, I'm saying this because the instrumental also kind of feels, especially at the start, like a mix and mash of some of the other songs on Scrap Heap. Uh, which I which I think is really cool, but um, yeah. In regards to like the song itself, um, what do you guys think of just "Leave Me Behind"? I do really like this song. I, I really. But like I feel like it I too. really like that. I really like a lot of Nate's songs. So yeah. I feel a little bit biased. <laughs> um, That's fine. That's but fine. it gives um, me a lot of. Um, it sort of gives me Linkin Park vibes as yeah. well. How it goes from the rocky to the rap. Um, and that's what some of Linkin Park songs used to do. Oh. That's why, that's why I like it a lot. No, that's a good point. Especially because I, when I was listening to them before, like for the video, like for what we're doing now, um, I was like cleaning and like in the car and stuff. Now that I can actually see the lyrics, um, I reckon I like it more than before I knew what all the lyrics were. Hmm. Like, I and always like, liked how it sounded, but... Hmm. Because, uh, and I say it's more personal and almost less FNAF-inspired, because he literally, one of the lyrics yeah. is literally saying, like, will I ever be inspired to make music again, or something like that. Like, he's literally talking about himself. And yeah. that's, like, it, it's cool, but at the same time, it's like... Well, the one point I also want to make is, like, I wanted, I wanted, I've wanted to make this video for a while because... I am a big fan of Nate's music, and especially mm. the FNAF music. Like, there are a lot of other Nate Monster Battle songs that I love, like um, like, uh, like some of the Undertale stuff, the Zelda yeah. stuff. The I'm personally stuff. biased to the Zelda stuff because, like, I love Legend of Zelda. Um, yes. But... <laughs> and, yeah. Um, no, I just I love a lot of Nate's music. So. Yeah. No, that's fair, and like I, I love a lot of his music, but I, I uh, yeah, it's just it's easy for me to connect to the FNAF stuff because like it's just what I I know him by, and that's what I always what I end up coming back to, so that's why mm. we're making this list. But the whole point of the Leave Me Behind song is him saying like, hey, the fandom the fandom wants so much from me, and I don't want to give it to them because there's only so much I can do, so much I can create, and I want to do my own thing from now. So, by saying this, will everyone leave me behind? Will everyone mm. stop caring about me? And I'm here to say now, no. I love oh, your original no, stuff, no. Nate. We all love your stuff. So, whenever you do come back, yes, we will be here and we will listen to your music. So... Like, come to Australia. <laughs> Please. Bro! Tour to Australia. Look, I, I know, even if they, even if he did, he probably wouldn't come to Adelaide, but bro. I'll go to Melbourne. I'll go to Sydney. I don't yeah, really yeah. care. Just we'll come to it. Australia. I've flown to interstate for concerts before. I'll do it again. I'll Fucking catch COVID it. again. Do it again. <laughs> COVID 2. <laughs> Alright, so, in regards to the tier list, leave me behind. 
<sighs> I'm I'm struggling. I do think he belongs on the t- uh, one of the top two tiers. I think just so, because... but I don't want to put the first song on like top tier. The bet, like I know really? it's a weird feeling. It's just like no, I immediately know what's the best, and everything goes down here from here. Like no, yeah, like like maybe. I mean, we can always move it later. Exactly. Maybe put yeah, it, I would put it at very good for now. Yeah, because it's the um, first song. <laughs> yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, leave me behind. In very good, like leaving him behind, featuring Cam Steady in very good. I am happy with that choice as well. All right, moving on to the no. next song. What do we have? Nothing left to want. All right, mm-hmm. nothing left to want. Mm. One thing I very much appreciate about this song is that, like, if you listen to this and you go back to listen to a different song from like, an earlier song from Nate, like this is the end, you can hear how much better he's gotten at screaming. At screamo. Was like, that him screaming? It is him screaming. I didn't know that. I thought there was someone else. No, he can scream, actually. There's one song, uh, Scrab Heap, which features someone else that screams. Uh, Aaron mm. Gray from Ghost I Fight, really I like believe. <laughs> yeah, no, that, well, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to I that. Am. But, um, well, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Nate, Nate can in fact scream, and this is him. And it is just a testament to how much better he's gotten at it over the years. Mm. Um, for me, nothing left to want. Uh, again, it, it's another song I've been listening to on repeat. I've all, I've been admittedly kind of listening to all of these songs on repeat. Um, but I know uh, the lyrics of this are actually referencing, um, a th- like uh, the opening. The first verse is at least uh, referencing the um, the cassette man call at the end of Pizzeria Simulator when you get the oh. proper when you get the proper good ending. That's what it references. Uh, like I'm afraid you've been misinformed. Oh, um, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and then um, our connection is terminated. Like that, yep. that, it's all a reference to that. So um, the way he's taken that and turned that in the lyrics, I think is really cool. Mm. And um, yeah, it's again, it's, it feels like a big swan song and a big reference to a lot of his stuff. Um, do you guys still see the tier list on the order you see my Google? I see your Google Drive. God fucking damn it. Ignore the Google Drive. (laughs) Because this... I I made notes. Yep. So, um... Yep. Nothing left to want. Yep. It references a lot of the previous FNAF games. Uh... Features the the call from Cassette Man and Henry. Second course feels like they're referencing FNAF 4, VR Help Wanted, and Nightmare. This is the end with some of the references as well. Um, yeah, some of the monsters you only see in your dreams and whatnot. Um, I think it's really good, and I, this is one of the few Screamo songs from Nate that I very much enjoy. So, uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, I do um, like this one. I like it, and I, I didn't click on the little reference at the start. <laughs> um, but also l- looking through the lyrics, I see the, um... Uh, the monster this whole time mm. is a reference to one oh, of his other song? songs as I knew... well. I knew there was a couple that had reference. There it is. It's at the end. Well, not song at the end. I knew there was yeah. a couple that referenced some of his other songs that I thought was cool, but I couldn't remember which song. Yeah, I can't remember was. what song that says uh, was the monster this whole time, but. I know that's a reference to another song, which I think is pretty cool. I think Gen- Genius might tell you, but I'm trying to remember. Because mm. I, re- I read them. Uh, oh. Yeah, it is a reference to Nightmare. I just read Nightmare. Nightmare. I was wondering if Nightmare... I was looking at the list, trying to remember the lyric, but I... Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Moosh, what about you? Rethink of this song. I do like it. Um, I... I was gonna say it doesn't feel like a huge Five Nights at Freddy's songs, but I really only know the first two or three games, maybe. Because I well, in, re- in regards to other nameless but... battle music, how do you feel about it? 
oh, like I just like it. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it feels feels like a Nate song. Mm. Like if you know what I mean, like how you hear something, you're like, yeah, that's Nate. Um, like some of his earlier stuff that I heard. Maybe I'm trying to think. It. How often does he stream? How, how often not, does he not do Not very. Um, not very. I'm trying to think. I've got one of his albums on CD. I've got Paid and Exposure on CD. Uh, like, I listen to his stuff on Spotify, but I have that one on CD, and I'm trying to remember if there was anything in Paid and Exposure. No, I don't think he really does Grimo. No. So... But yeah, yeah no, surprising. you can definitely tell he's improved on the screamo from, because I <laughs> I listened to the whole playlist last night, mm. uh, but the opposite direction of what we're doing, and it was funny hearing this is the end with Nate's screams, like screamo, to coming to uh, this one, and he's improved a lot. I'm sorry, I'm hungry, I mean. Yeah, no, I just put this is the end on, like, on my <laughs> headphones. This is the end on... He's gotten a lot better, definitely, for sure. Yeah, it sounds like he's really, like, st stretching his voice out and trying to do it in this is the end. Like, this is the end sounds painful. Whereas yeah. nothing yeah. left to want sounds... Well, not natural, there's nothing really natural about Screamo, but it doesn't sound like it hurts. Yeah, it doesn't sound as forced. Like he's definitely over time, he's just gotten better he's at it. Learnt better techniques and. Mm. For me, I feel like it's also very good in my mind. I feel like mm. nothing left to what's very good because he doesn't linger on the screaming. And no, it's even like... even the transition from screaming to just regular singing is a lot smoother and a lot better compared to this is the end. Mm, yeah. Like, I don't love Screamer. I don't hate it. I do like it when it, like, he's done just, like, the right amount, I think. Like, it's not overpowering the song. And also, you know, it's not making me want to switch it off because it's just Screamer. Yeah. Um, I think he's got the right balance between the Screamo and the real, not real singing, the, you know, singing. Regular, regular, regular singing. Thank you. I got to think yeah. of the word. <laughs> See, e even with me, like, a lot of the time I listen to Screamo and I don't understand what they're saying, and I know, like, you thought that at least with this, but mm. with me, like, even though he was screaming, I could hear the lyrics, I could hear, like, I could understand most of them straight away. Like, so I'm afraid you've been misinformed, I know you've suffered, but it's time to be reborn. Like, I actually understood that fairly quickly, like, mm. without even noticing. But, um, I feel like nothing left to want is worthy of very good. I don't know, I, I wouldn't call it top tier. No. It's not one it of those. It is, very, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's, I it's agree. very good. Mm. I'm happy with that placement, and uh, at the end of this, we're, we're, we're going to probably adjust the rankings a little bit when we've yeah. had more time to deliberate, but for now, uh, yeah, nothing left to want in very good. Yeah. Uh, next up on the list, we have Always Come Back. Always come back. Now, mm. this song, as if you couldn't tell by the name alone, is entirely focused about uh, William Afton, Purple Guy, Killer, the main antagonist in Five Nights at Freddy's. It's literally all about him, and it even has that famous line, which I think Nate just said, I think he said it on Twitter or in an interview or something, he literally said, um... So th this lyric, maybe one day you'll find humanity. Until then, don't you dare say that we are the same. He originally, to no more. he originally said that in No More, and then he said it at the end of Sandcastle Kingdoms, literally the song, mm -hmm. which also mm -hmm. capped off the album, and now he said it here. He said it's just one of his like favorite lyrics. He just thinks it's really sick. And, and it um, my brain like the like tingles like in a good way <laughs> the heebie-jeebies yeah, yeah the good, good heebie-jeebies <laughs> the good heebie-jeebies <laughs> good feeling 
The mm. good heebie-jeebies. The one that like ASMR videos are supposed to give you, but they don't. Yeah. For me I was anyway. Listening. <laughs> I was listening back to the Ultimate Collection review we did, and, like, the fact that, like, all the Yumi and Gus were just gushing about, like, when we all first heard that lyric in Sandcastle Kingdoms, we all freaked out, like, yes. HE'S FUCKING SAID IT AGAIN! And when he did it again here, I was like, YES! MY BOY! <laughs> that's, my boy. that's awesome. Um, it is a good line. It is a good line. Um, mm. But yeah, no, literally everything, all the lyrics and all that, it's all a reference to him and like, like his quotes, like, I always come back, is one of it. He's basically his only main quote. But um, it's all about the purple guy, it's all mm. about William Afton, and uh, cohesively, it's a fucking phenomenal song. Mm. And like, it's almost like an abrupt start because of the brief amount of song and then it just stops like maybe i'm a broken man stop it's just like, maybe i can barely stand stop and it's like mm -hmm. oh it, it's getting you ready it's pro it's prepping you for something and then it gets into it and i love the chorus man mm. it's one of my yeah. favorite courses choruses fuck and um yeah i am I've listened to the song multiple times. I've listened to all these songs multiple times, admittedly, all the new stuff. But, yeah, Always Come Back is one of my favorites. This is probably from memory of the new stuff, anyway. Uh, I don't know what that was about. <laughs> um, this is probably my favorite mm. of the this, new songs. Was this the one you guessed would be Moosha's favorite? Uh, no. I thought... Um, because Moosh said they liked um, swing, like the, the more swingy songs, um, I thought Count the well, Teeth. Ah, I, uh, I don't remember that. I'd have to. I have to re-listen to that one. Yeah. I don't know any of them by name. I know how they sound. I don't know any of them by name. At no, the that's right. Yet. <laughs> yeah. um, no, Phantom is probably my favorite Nate song, but um, I love this sound. Mm. Yeah, it, it's like. It's dramatic, it's almost, like, a little bit sad, but then you yeah. remember that, like, it, it, that's at least how it sounds when you're just listening to the song. Yeah, then you like, I, that, Yeah, sorry, you go. Okay, I was just gonna say, I love songs that, like, when you listen to, you can imagine, like, singing, at the, like, the top of your lungs in the shower or in the car, or, like, this feels like one of those songs. Mm. I've been looking like, at you can just be, I, I've been yeah. losing me. Like, just, like yeah. I... Love going off your Broadway, wall. like musicals and stuff. So, like the drama, like just the fact that you mm. could get really dramatic just singing, and like he does, like singing as well. Mm. But like that's how I kind of rate music as to how much fun I can have singing it. Like how much you want to sing like, the song at home when I mean I don't live with anybody, but um, when I'm just like at home cleaning because I'm an adult. <laughs> And like singing at the top of my lungs while I'm like cleaning and stuff, like that's kind of how I write. And that's like complete. Like that's completely valid. Like how much you want to sing the song is yeah. definitely a good indicator. I just love that though because to anyone, like you listen to it and like you think it's dramatic, it's a little bit sad, and then yeah. if you are a FNAF aficionado, you know it's all about the killer, the main <laughs> bad guy, and you're like, oh my god, they've mm. made me try to feel sympathy for the bad guy. <laughs> Ooh, that yeah. Nate, you bitch. But, like, it, it's well, fucking well <laughs> executed. It's so good. Give us your opinions on Always Come Back, Ollie. Um, I, I like it. It's like... Like... I like it, but it's like not one of my top tops for this, like, these songs, but I still really like it. And, like, after, like, reading all the, the books as well, and just, like, the FNAF books, um, just all these lyrics are just like, you do, in a way, you're just like, oh yeah, I feel sorry for this dude. And then, you know, when you feel uh, the whole, like, um, where is it? 
uh, how he always has to come back. It's like, well, you're the one that killed kids, so... <laughs> and stopped uh, them in suits. They just did it right back at you, buddy. I know, and that's why I, love, that's why I love the lyric, like, every night I scream and shout, but I know that there's no way out. Like, yeah, yeah. because you're the one that brought this upon yourself, you fuck. <laughs> you did this to yourself! I guess this is from, like, a narcissist point of view, then, this kind yeah. of... So that, like, I, you, you I, I know that who way. the purple man is. Not as in-depth, obviously, but... Mm. Yeah. It, look, I, yeah. To get you a little bit up to speed, literally one of the latest games, uh, Ultimate Custom Night, which is just... It's not even, like, a story-driven game. It's just, like, a challenge to people. But it's heavily implied that... Uh, he's finally, like, he's finally been killed in some manner, and Ultimate Custom Night, him mm. confronting all the animatronics he's made and cursed, is mm. his literal hell. Like, that's the point of it, is his literal, and, like, a lot of the voice lines from the animatronics afterwards imply that much, and that's actually referenced in some of the other songs that we're going to talk about, but, um, yeah, it's, it, 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 like, he's literally at this point in hell, and then security breaches try to bring him back in a really shit way, but security breach is shit. It it it's is, that, is security breach. Is that the one that was released with heaps of bugs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's and the more a little open. Bit of, uh, ending that did. <laughs> <laughs> you fu <laughs> fucking Evie, what are you doing? Just, did you wait? Did you hear? Yes. Yeah, no, no, I, I just saw Evie, like, ah! Yeah, no, she's not amused yeah. that I got home from work, cleaned, and then went on my computer. Uh, um, instead Evie of sitting in the lounge room watching TikTok. Just with, like, an ending that didn't make sense, and just mm -hmm. a not fully cohesive story. Security mm. breach shut, sucked. Uh, that was another thing Gus and I did on Firestorm. We uh, played... Security Breach uh, did a one hour edited down video uh, and we got a glitched, bugged ending. And then we spent like five hours playing it properly to get the proper ending. And I swear yeah. to God, like three and a half hours in, I napped for 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I swear to, I swear to God, I remember laying my head on the desk and like napping for a little bit, for a little bit. It was so funny. But, mm. um. See, I watched Call Me Kevin break it even further. So. <laughs> mm. I don't know how but much yeah, actual like, gameplay I saw, but yeah. This is another um, one of those times where it felt like FNAF had the perfect ending, and then they ruined it. Ruined it because like they've done it, they did it like three times, but then Pete's rear simulator having the whole bit with Henry burning, yeah, uh, like but burning everything and getting rid of William, and yeah. then Ultimate Custom Night kind of being an epilogue, where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is his hell. And then Security mm -hmm. Breach is just like, nah, like, Security Breach and VR Help Wanted set it up, van set up this new killer, Vanny, as, like, under the mm. influence of Afton, but not Afton. Like, this is just yeah. a new killer, we're gonna focus on that. But... No, that, that's fine. Like, the new, yeah. the new game is basically set up a new killer who was kind of, like, inspired by the main guy, right? And yeah. instead of focusing on her, they just brought back the main guy. Which was fucking and, stupid, because he's yeah. meant to be dead, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, that's... Tang <laughs> tangent aside, tangent aside, always come back. Um, I think for Mushi um, I... I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think for Mushi and I, it's top tier, but it doesn't sound like it's top tier for you, Ollie. Mm. I don't want to be cliche and put it in very good, because otherwise the whole thing will be... <laughs> that's going to end up in very good. <laughs> I, f I feel like if if two out of three of us think it's the it should be in one spot, we should put it there. Yeah. I feel like I'm fine like, with that. Like, cause I, f I feel like currently all three of us agree that leave me behind and nothing left of one should be in very good. Yes. I think we're we're all comfortable with that. But since two of us think always come back should be top tier, I think we should put it in, in top tier. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So, yeah. where did you think it should be? Ah, me. <laughs> Yeah. It's alright. Oh. <laughs> Dude. Enough. Just make you want to scream at you out. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a shame. Nah, nah, that's fair enough, man. We all got our opinions. I have 
I had one prediction for the song. Uh, I can't wait to get to the song to hear your thoughts on it, Ollie, because I had predictions for both of you. So I'm eager to get to those. But um, next up on the list is the uh, titles track for the Scrap Heap album, Scrap Heap featuring Ghost Fight, or more specifically, Aaron Gray from Ghost Fight. All right, so Scrap Heap. Um, interesting song. Mm. I think the shortest one out of all of his FNAF songs at two, two minutes. minutes and ten seconds, which is surprising. Mm. Featuring Aaron Gray, the screamer of Ghost Fight. Uh, haven't actually... Ghost Fight haven't made a lot of music yet, so um, I haven't listened to a lot of the stuff. Um, and it is appears to be from the point of view... Uh, Moosh, you're not going to understand a single fucking thing I'm about to say. It appears to be, <laughs> it appears to be from the point of view of the amalgamation known as the Blob in yep. Security Breach, and uh, while interesting, I'm I feel going. like I need to see what it looks like. Oh, it's fucked up, bro. It is really messed up. Um, it's interesting. It's also the inspiration for the Scrap Heap cover art oh, album. That's not what I imagined at all. That's less yeah. creepy than I imagined it, actually. <laughs> yeah, so, but you see, in the game, you only see the top. You don't actually see the bottom and the rest of the animatronics melded into it. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, it, it, it's a weird. In, it's an interesting mixture. I like the instrumental. It took me a while to get used to the instrumental. The Scrap Heap did it, did it. Da, 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 da. And then the, like that that sounds cool, but I feel like it, it, it's inconsistent uh, in a way that I don't like. Um, I feel like this song sticks out, but that's not necessarily a good thing. It's like sticks out in that way, is what I mean. Yeah, I feel like that was almost kind of the point for it, since mm. it was the title track, and. The, like, when I saw this featured Ghost Fight, but only really featured Aaron Gray, it made me think, okay, so Nate's just trying to pop, like, prop up his band with his last, one of his last few FNAF songs, to trying to get them some attention, which is fair enough. Um, but, like, e even the screaming. One thing that always gets me about screamo and screaming music is that when they scream about things, which... I don't imagine need to be conveyed through the method of screaming. Like when he when when he says we're gonna fall to the no 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 that's I'm I'm trying to look at the start. I wrote away. I look death in the face. I start to wither and I'm truly afraid. I don't imagine anyone ever screamo screaming. I'm truly afraid. It just contradicts itself, like yeah. in my mind. So. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, but, I don't listen to a lot of Screamo, so I can't really say for sure. But a lot, of, a lot of Screamo artists do that. It's just like, I am afraid! And scream yeah. that really loudly. And like a lot of artists do that, and I just don't get it. That's one of the reasons I don't like Screamo. Like, it sounds like it should be intense and fucking in your face. Like, mm, fuck! Like, it's raging. But then it's kind of screaming... See, that's kind of one of the things I like about Screamo is lyrics that are being screamed, and then you actually listen to them, and you're like, oh, you poor soul. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm the opposite in that regard. That's why like, this kind of caught me off guard. That's my sense of humor, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but yeah, it's entirely focused on the on the blob. It has a few quotes from Afton and Nightmare. Um, I forgot exactly what the quote is because I've written it down, but I took it from the um, Genius page. The Join uh, Us for a Bite is reference to a different song. Okay. Yeah. Um, not one of Nate's, but someone else's. Um, yeah. It was a sister location one, Join Us for a Bite. Yeah, and that's like one of the most popular fucking... FNAF songs out there. The only real artists I listen to that make FNAF music other than Nate, like, I'd listened to Try Hard Ninja for a while, I haven't for a while, because the, this is one thing I'm glad Nate has kind of said, you know what, I'm done. Like, I know I said this before, but I'm 100% fucking done with this, because otherwise he's just going to fall into the trap like Try Hard Ninja did, of just 
oh well, no one likes my other stuff, I'm just gonna make FNAF stuff now. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. like, even, yeah. It would be nice if, like, I love Nate's original stuff as well as his fandom stuff. Um, but it would be good if he did feel like in the future he could make, you know, one or two songs because he felt like it. Not because he's obligated, he feels obligated to. Mm. Mm. Like, I think that would be cool if he could do his own stuff, but then you know how sometimes a, you know, a band will do a cover of another song just because they might like it? That kind of thing might be nice. Like, they're not a cover band, but they cover a song. Like, if mm. Nate is inspired, it'd be good if he, you know, still felt like he could... Oh, that was something floating in my face. Um, come back <clears throat> if he wanted to, but not, like, that he has to. Yeah. No, that, that would be nice. That would be preferable. Um, so, what do you guys think about Scrap Heap? Not I was just, I think it's all, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think it's alright. Like... Mm, not very good or alright. Mm. I'm... Mostly just because I'm not a huge fan of Screamo and this song has a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah, for, for the short length of the song, it is predominantly Screamo. And, yeah. Like, even the... Even the chorus part itself, I'm not a fan of because usually, like I have listened to some songs that like a screamo during like verse, and then the chorus sort of like slaps, sort of like what um, hmm. uh, nothing left to want. Was that yeah. the one? Yeah. Mm. So like how that went from screamo to like singing. Uh, but this, I'm not a fan of this mm. one. Yeah. And the other thing I was saying as well about how the instrumentals seemed inconsistent, like, it, it, <clears> it's <throat> like they're real. Maybe it's kind of the point, because it's Scrap Heap. It's based on the blog, where it's an amalgamation of animatronics. Maybe that's why things seem disjointed. It's a mixture. Because, like, especially at the end, when it, like, breaks down and slows down. Like, it, that caught me off guard, and I didn't really like it, so, like, I feel like maybe that was the entire point of this, to make it feel disjointed and mashed together, because that's, like, I, I feel like if you wanted to ma like, mashing things together, leave me behind, did it much better, but mm. Scrap Heap was just because it was based on the blob, I feel like that's what they tried, but, um, yeah, nah, I wasn't really a fan of it either, I'm fine putting it in not very good if... yeah i'm fine with that too i feel like that's a Fair. worthwhile place and like n no discredit to like aaron gray or anything um first of all he's streaming before and he's like he's good at screaming that's what he's known for that's why he's there but um yeah just he did it felt weird here and like i now that i think about it the instrumental i just like the first like 30 seconds Mm. And the, re the rest of it just kind of happens. So, um, I think the the sound I is think cool. this Grima was distracting from, you know, the lyrics and the rest of the, the song, in a way. Like, it... Mm. I don't know, that could be me. That could just be me. But it just... The Grima feels distracting from everything else going on. Feels like a lot. A lot. Is happening. Yeah, that, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Next up is Nothing To Me. So Nothing To Me is one of those more loosely connected songs to Security Breach. It's definitely based on Security Breach, but it's one of those that don't really have direct references in lyrics, more so he's, ta he's found and taken the story and perhaps one of the game theory videos again? Maybe he's taken that? Because the actual theme of Now You're Nothing To Me, it's it's interesting because that doesn't really play into Security Breach a lot because there's no real point. Like, th there was one hinted, like, almost hinted, uh, some scrapped hinted lines that maybe Gregory could betray Freddy and like that was it, but that was never really worked on, and um, yeah, the whole game doesn't really have anything that involves betrayal. It's Freddy and Gregory, buddy buddy, you know, getting along and all that. And it's not, it's not a, 
the the whole theme of the song doesn't really fit. It's a little bit more disjointed. But in saying that, like the only real direct reference is "Way to Go, You Superstar," which is pretty superstar. funny. Superstar. <laughs> Way to go, oh, superstar! I <laughs> knew you could do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I need someone to encourage me, like Brittany encourages him. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah, best, best boy. I can be your Freddy. <laughs> you don't have the deep voice for it. Um, no. but my hand, my hand is it, reaching for you, Mush. Where's the edge of the camera? <laughs> oh my god. The way, the way I'm cutting this is probably not going to work, but... <laughs> oh, how are you cutting um, this way? Maybe, uh, Ollie, reach the <laughs> other way. Ollie, reach the other way. Yeah, now you go. Now you're high-fiving. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway... You're so, flipping me, you ass! I'm not flipping <laughs> you! It's the way you look on my screen. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, in saying all that, I don't think nothing to me like is direct from security breach it takes inspiration from it which mm. is what i like i like it when it's just not direct references and lyrics it's just based yeah. off security breach which mm -hmm. a lot of other fandom artists i like do and was, i'm gonna like the um hero hero of time album yeah and that's what is that what the album's called hero of time something like that yeah the Legend I have, of Zelda album. I, I, I have all the CDs behind me. Hold on. <laughs> Wait. Ah, my headphones. Wait. Um. You guys talk. Oh. He thought I was trying to get that. Because <laughs> it was his Friend point that I was. I can finally flip All right. In. Because I literally mentioned it, I Friend literally. Time. I'm not. Fuck off. <laughs> um. So yeah, mangoes. Mm. Songs of Time. That's songs of Time. Called. Sandcastle time King. Is one of the songs on there. It is. Sandcastle Kingdoms. The Enjoy the Show special thing. Pain Exposure. Ultimate Collection. Uh, thanks for more covers. I don't know if there was ever a CD for Thanks for the Covers. I wish there was. Uh, what You Want and the more recent uh, Critical Hits, which. Uh, in one of our podcasts, uh, actually, no, I might have just, I don't know if it was on a podcast, but, uh, Gus, like, gave shit, it was just like, he's already put a bunch of these songs on CDs anyway, and now he's just making, a, like, a compilation, just to try and, like, make more money, like, it's a bit of a waste, and I'm like, I feel like well, every I, artist at some point has a compilation CD, like, I'm mm. pretty sure I own... Oh, no, actually, I only I own one. a few Fallout Boy greatest hits, so... I own the... Blink 182, like best hits or whatever it is, greatest hits. Mm. But I also own those same songs on at least two other Blink CDs. So like, yeah. No, care. but the thing that got me about this is like he was he was literally saying like, oh, it's a bit of a waste of money, but whatever. The fanboys were eating up, and um, th th there's me sitting there like, yeah, I ordered it two hours ago, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. I like I his think... CDs. I think compilations are great for, or like, best hits or whatever are great for just getting into someone. Like, I grabbed the Blink-182 best hits, greatest hits, whatever, I can't remember what the CD's called. Um, mm. because I was just starting to listen to them. That was my first Blink CD. Um, first time I listened to them. And then, you know, you decide you like something, you're like, I might get, like, this one, and then this one, and this one. And now I think I have four Blink CDs. That's what I do with Foo Fighters, yeah. Oh, I, I, get, I get that. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, back to nothing to me. <laughs> we're, we're good at tangents, I've realised this. What do you guys think of nothing to me? I like, I like it. it. It sort of reminds me of his old, like his first few um, fandom songs where he like doesn't... It's not full of references, it's literally just the own original thing. Yeah, that's yeah. what While I was saying. Still being connected to the games. Mm. That's why I brought up the Songs of Time. Um, that's why I brought that up because I liked how like that album is based off of Ocarina of Time, but he's not just telling you what happened. It's like he's mm. made a story out of the different um, temples and things that happen in the Zelda game. And from what you guys are saying, it sounds like he's done the same thing with this song and the game. Yeah. Yes. Yes, because a, a lot of the other songs that we've talked about so far have had either like 
direct references or quotes. I guess Always Come Back is in a similar vein to Nothing to Me, whereas in, like, it, but that's purely based on one character, whereas Nothing to Me is seems to be based on Security Breach as a whole. So, yeah, that, that's, why, that's why, like, I have the idea of, like, maybe this is another one of those, like, game theory inspired ones. Because mm. I don't imagine that Nate's played Security Breach, but um, well, I yeah, but yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but um, yeah, no, in, in like again, it's like one of those um dramatic instrumentals as well. Mm. Like I, I don't know how to explain it. the the guitar as just um at the start before he starts singing, like. I don't know, it sounds really, really cool. This is why I kind of wish I had Gus here to explain it, because he has a better idea of music theory. Ah, but, um, you yeah, know, I just love the sound of the instrumental. It sounds much more dramatic, and, um, So, yeah. like, the start... <sighs> yeah, I love it. Like, I play the guitar, but I don't... I'm not, like, really into guitars, so I don't have the language either. Yeah, yeah. Um... But I know what you mean, like, the the way it's picked, it doesn't sound like it's... Oh, there's, like, a style of picking that you can do where, you're like, it's not pressed all the way down. I can't think of what it's called. But it kind of sounds like that, or it could also just... Could also just be a foot pedal that he's using, or something. I don't know, whatever effect he's put on there, it does. It sounds really cool. Mm. I love, like, that kind of... I wish I could play this well. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ollie? What do you think? I like it. I already said. Ah, <laughs> mm. oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah. That's right. No. Nah. No, I said before, Bush went and said that's what she liked. That's why she brought up the songs of time. That's right. Of time. Yeah. That's mm. right. So, on oh, regards to the tier list, um, again, I'm either thinking. I don't think it's. I don't think it's top tier. Yeah. But it is good. Yeah. I, I don't think it's. I don't think all right. Well, it's I think like it's in that, that. It's like in that middle ground. <laughs> it's very all right. <laughs> it's very yeah. all right. I, I, I think all right is a pretty comfortable place because, like, yeah. I, I do. Like, in saying that, like, I did come back to nothing to me quite often. Like when he was starting to drop these songs, but mm -hmm. I found myself going to um, a few others more than. Mm. Like, like, nothing left to want. Yeah. So, um, I feel like, yeah, nothing to me in all right is pretty comfy. I'm happy Sounds with that. Me. Yeah. All right. Next song. Time to move on. Okay, so, time to move on. It's one of those more melancholic songs. And I think Nate did a wonderful job with this. And... The, like, it, 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 it appears to be just surely, like, whereas nothing to me was just kind of based on security breach as a whole, Time to Move On definitely seems to focus on the connection between Freddy and Gregory, even, like, that's kind of, the video was literally just them two standing on stage, and, um, the second verse, parts of it has references to home, and lyrics in the bridge also call back to obsolete and mangled, which is really, really cool. And the constant repeating of the line, time to move on, it's like, this is almost like, whereas leave me behind was kind of Nate's, yeah, fuck you. Like I'm trying to get away from mm -hmm. this shit. Time to move on was kind of just him, like gently patting you on the back, like getting you ready to be like, guys, it's time to move on from this. All yeah. right, like, I mean, he could also almost be talking to himself because this would this like fandom songs is a big part of what he's done. And um, yeah, it, this initially when it first came out, I I didn't like it purely because the album art for the single Gregory looks like one of those really shit AI drawings. And I, it, like, it just put me off. But um, then I just ignored that and listened to the song, just as is. And mm -hmm. I loved it. I love it. It is so nice. And 
in the more heartfelt and more much more oomph and emphasis he puts later on like i think in the second chorus or like near the ending when um I'm trying to just imagine the lyrics yeah literally right at the end i'm angry i'm confused and i've been left away to rot like the way he screams that fucking mm. drew me in and like even though that was right at the end yeah and um I do like the fact that the, the, I do like the, the lyric in calling back to security breach, bury me where you can't breach my insecurity. I'm like, ha ha, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, I love time to move on. Like one of the songs that excels to me. What about you guys? I do like it, but I feel like you probably like it more as a FNAF fan. I just kind of like the way it sounds. Um, mm. I, I'm, I'm like even comparing it to just like, even th looking at it as not a FNAF song. I do think mm -hmm. it's really, I just, I really, really like it. Yeah. What about you, Ali? This is the song I wanted to know your opinion <laughs> on. Well, what first of all, think? I will say, uh, fuck you for predicting I'm a basic bitch. <laughs> Was I right? <laughs> yes. Out of the new yeah! ones, I like this one the most. Yes. Let's go. Um, but no, it feels like just the way it is and just a lot of the, um, lyrics, um, sorry, I'm trying to find the one thing. It just, just the lyrics itself, like from the point of, for security breach it is definitely a glamrock freddy and gregory song like yeah like the way like the way he's saying like it feels like it's like nate being like patting your back uh time to move on it's like time to move on superstar yeah it's like it's basically it seems like it's a song glamrock would Brown Mark Freddy for uh, Gregory. Yeah. So, because in the game he was so fixated on staying and wanting to try and <clears throat> find the missing children, which we never got. Um, nah. um, but he wanted to stay and like try and figure it out. Whereas Freddy's just like, I need to get you out. You know, time to move on. You can go escape. And all that. Um, but I do like the song. It's another one of those ones that it. There is references, obviously. There, there is. I, I noticed them. I didn't really pay attention before, but I noticed them. Like the monologue when Freddy first sees the blob, and then um, when Afton tries to take control of him, like. Um, they're not dead yet, they're searching for me, they can't see that I'm not real and this isn't me. Like, because the, 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 um, I'm not me whole motif, like, is kind mm. of referenced there, which is really good, and mm. as well, the constant thing of, uh, burning what isn't there, and, mm. um, yeah, yeah. no, it, it, it's It's a really very good. nice, like, I like a lot of these songs so but. oh yeah sorry the whole reason i thought this was another game theory inspired thing is because game theory is literally like oh what if gregory is the crying child which i think is a little bit silly but um like one of the last lyrics in nate's song is time to take on a brand new name which is what made me think of that like mm. oh has he just watched game theory but then it, that that's also what made me think, oh, is Nate gonna not come back because Nate wants to battle? Or is he gonna... Yeah, potentially. Yeah. A little bit double-sided sort of... Yeah. Double meaning kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm. But yes, I, I really like this one. It's good to know. <laughs> Tier list-wise, where shall we put it? 
this is one of the other songs where it seems like Ollie and I prefer it much more than Rouge. Yeah, this, like for this... me it's just alright, but... If you guys really like it, then, you know, put it wherever. Very really... good or top tier for me. I, it took me, like, a, a one or two listen-tos to get through it, and now whenever I hear, like, the first five seconds, I'm like, let's go! And, like, I'm fucking hyped for the whole thing, so I want to put it in top tier, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. All right. This is a pretty this is a pretty good list. One thing I do think, um, I don't know if any song will go in the bin. I know there's like one or two of the older songs which I wasn't a big fan of, but I don't know about you guys. So I mm. think we're we will avoid the bottom. I reckon there is one that I skip every time, but I can't think of what okay. it's called off the top of my head. We'll see when we get there. So that is a good I place to time. skip it in like the preparation for the video, but. When it comes, yeah. when I'm listening to Nate's stuff and it comes on, I reckon it, there is one or two that I skip. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, next one is To My Grave. So To My Grave was the first new song, like it was the first song he released that's a part of the Scrap Heap album. And I remember when I just saw the album art and it was literally just like the broken Chica from Security Breach. I'm like, oh, he's going to talk about Security Breach. And, um... Yeah, it seems purely based on that. The lyrics seem to speak more about the endings of the effects that Vanny actually has on the player, with what with the mentions of like reality reality failing and watching this burn, and the idea of falling into a grave might like like might be a parallel to the ending of Security Breach as well, and uh, descending below the supposed final resting place of William Afton because that's what you do in Security Breach, like descending down. Um, with To My Grave, it's just, yeah, it's heavier. It's not, like, mm. metal heavier, but, like, yeah, before he really, before he gets into the first verse, it really sets the mood. The guitar, like, I love heavier songs, like, heavy mm. guitar. Like, it's <laughs> <a different song. laughs> yeah, like, it started, because uh, mm. I've listened to Nate's older songs a lot, I kind of, I didn't kind of listen to them, but I skipped them and went straight to the new stuff. I press play on this and I'm like, like, oh my god, this is, yeah, like this is the music that I love. Um, I do like how it works as um, a song. Like it's a Five Nights at Freddy's song, I guess, but it doesn't. You can listen to it as someone who's not a fan of the games, mm. like myself, and still really enjoy the song and the lyrics and all of that. Like, yeah. They don't necessarily have to be Five Nights at Freddy's lyrics. You can sort of make up your own story mm. to this song, I guess. Yeah, that's one thing May has always excelled at with mm. his so like his fandom inspired songs is that a lot of them you can like take elsewhere. Like it, it, that's mm. why like I, I listened to like his Attack on Titan song. His um, what the fuck? The, the, there's a new horror game he's made two songs for that's on Scrappy. I don't even know what the horror game's called. It's the one mm -hmm. with the fucking blue-haired doll or something. I don't know. And, um, like, Benny, Benny and the Ink Machine. Like, I've listened to his song. I didn't know there like was that. a new Bendy song. Uh, that, yeah, that was on the, um, What You Want album. Oh, uh, maybe I have heard that one then. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, like, I listen to a lot of them not knowing the context of the games. But um, still heavily enjoying them anyway. Also, by the way, Gus and I reviewed What You Want. Check out Firestorm. Um, but To My Grave, heavy as fuck. And then I like the way it starts off heavy. First verse, it like calms it down a bit. Starts picking up in the bridge. And then the chorus go fucking goes ham. And it goes back to heavy and I love mm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... It is, Ollie... it is one of my favorites as well. Sorry, okay. like... <laughs> Are we all in agreement? Are we yeah, all in agreement? So. Yeah, top tier. Top tier. Oh, it's fuck just, yeah. Like, you put it on and it gets me excited for the rest of the album. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very good, like, I just really like it. And like yeah. Rush said, it doesn't just have to be a, like, lyric-wise, like, a FNAF song. It really reminds me of um, his other fandom song the parasite one the monster inside 
Ah, oh, okay. How like that one you can listen to without not like I've showed it to um Oh Buggy. I think I know that one. Yeah, I showed it to Buggy for inspiration for Erwin playlist. And they listen to it and they're like, Oh my god, yes. Like ah, yes. Yeah. And that's why I like this like I just like this song a lot. Like the, my favorite, one of my favorite lyrics, which you can interpret as Five Nights at Freddy's and also as not, is Five Nights Until I Descend, Relapse and I'm Spiraling Again, and Little Monsters Are In My Head, When Will They Learn? And then it gets mm. into the chorus. Mm. Like, I love that, because it just makes me think, like, yeah, this is going to be, oh, it could this be is about, a lot. It could be about anything. Yeah. Drugs! No, um... <laughs> I mean, I did, yeah. I did think that when you were reading the lyrics out, like, drugs... Yeah, awesome. relapse like, and I'm spiraling again. Like... Yeah, mm. that's kind of the thing. This this also could be another message to the fucking FNAF fans. The fandom mm. that wants more and more, and they're never going to get the complete answers, so they keep prodding and fucking prying for more information that you're never going to get. And that's mm. why they come and annoy the musicians, because it's just like... Like, I remember there was a whole thing about how, I think it was The Living Tombstone, one of his songs, he a FNAF song he made and dropped before one of the games came out, like, predicted nearly everything about the games, about that game, and, like, people for a while thought, like, oh, he's actually collaborating with Scott Cawthon and this is an official song, when mm. it wasn't, he mm. just knew what they- Are he you just... talking about the fucking second game one? The second game, I think that's what it was. <gasps> I'm yeah. sorry, that one angers me. I hate that one. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I haven't listened to a lot of Living Tombstone. I only know like two of its songs. And I, they're not, I don't they're not know enough. if I've listened to any, to be honest. Yeah, fair I enough. I really don't like that one. We will talk about that another time. But <laughs> we, we've all we've all agreed that To My Grave is going top to tier. top tier. So that covers everything from the Scrap Heap album. Now yeah. it's time to talk about the two songs that he made for FNAF, uh, about FNAF, from the What You Want album. First song being What You Want. Uh, you guys talked earlier about the uh, Linkin Park references almost, with how it goes from rock to rap. Uh, this kind of reminds me of From Ashes to New, with the pacing of the singing. Um, the entire, it almost feels like, yeah, the first verse is almost entirely filled with quotes from Ultimate Custom Night and the death quotes, like when you get killed by an animatronic or like taken out by one and the round ends, they nearly always have a reference, like a lion saying something. And the first verse is almost entirely that. So you're saying this one would give people who died a lot flashbacks. Yes. In that game, oh, he would fucking traumatize them. <laughs> it, it, it would, it, oh my God, like, cause like, um, I'm one of them. This is actually my favorite lyric by I think lyric. What the voice? My favorite voice line by um. I think it was Nightmare Freddy in the game. It's like um. Fuck. I am remade. Yeah, he 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 he's a gift that I can relish. A victim that dies and cannot perish. Like I love that. It's just like it's like uh, because um and, and like I'm not a nightmare anymore and. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am the burning reminder of your misdeeds. That was like one of the cheeker quotes. But yeah, um, yeah, and it's a lot heavier as well. That's I love what you want. It's a lot fucking heavier. Sorry, and the last, that's that's so right. Just jumped into the curtain and then complained because there was a curtain there. Continue. <laughs> Sorry. Moron. Um, <laughs> and the last chorus, uh, Nate seems to be referencing the namesake of the song. Like, it's like, yeah, this is what you want and what you need. It's all that you expect from me. Like, yeah, it, it's... Like, yeah, it Leave Me Behind gets into it much more in depth. But this is, like, another time when he tried to end it by saying, like, yeah, dude, like, so many people only expect, like, only want this sort of shit from me. And many of my fans, like, only want the FNAF stuff from me. Like, and, like, this is ridiculous and yeah that's why i feel like mm. he brought in jt music to kind of rap about like some of the main quotes from ultimate custom night which was really really cool like when i first mm. heard that and realized oh these are like 
all references. Like these are all quotes. That's really cool, actually. The way they've <laughs> what the fuck I'm happened sorry. there? <laughs> what? <laughs> what just happened? I saw. <laughs> Get on the windowsill, but the curtain, I've got it shut, otherwise it's like really bright. Uh, did she just <laughs> fall? I just I just saw. Did she just fall? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, all cats have nine lives. Wow. <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, anyway, what did you guys think of What You Want featuring JT Music? I think it's alright. I think it's, it's okay. Right, yeah. I I will. It's not one of my favorites. Like, I wouldn't put it on, but I wouldn't skip it. Yeah. Uh, I would. I'd skip it. You would skip it. I'd, I I go through phases where I just like skip like well, yeah, of like, my songs and every everyone does. <laughs> yeah, it's favorite. just it's everyone just does, one of the but... ones that I would skip if I were in a mood where I just wanted to listen to something but didn't really know what in yeah it's it's yeah. all right but yeah no that's fair i and i, I do... actually <coughs> sorry i do like the um oh the lyric you're talking about this is what you want from me blah 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 mm. Like, it's probably the start of, like, it feels like it's 100% the start of when Nate was just, just wanted to be done with FNAF stuff. Yeah, that, that's almost the entire reason he made the What You Want album. Mm. It was just like, yeah, the fine, I'll make a bunch of shit for these people and see what they think after that. Um, he said all right, and you know what, I feel like that's almost a perfect placement the, for the song. Ruby. What? Yeah. The microphone's not picking up Evie smacking a dice around. It, it, it is. I can, yeah, I heard it. is. It. I it's can, smash. I'll take the dice off it. Um, okay. Or I'll roll it. Fair, away. fair enough. Like, uh, Ruby was just playing. I, I heard the bell on Ruby, but that's fine. It's all right. I feel like, uh. Roll to 29. <laughs> well done. Now my dog's barking, so that's probably. <laughs> Now my dog's barking, so that's probably getting picked up as well. I'm really sorry, guys. I tried to make this as professional as I could, but, you know, circumstances and all white pets. It's fine. Um, I feel like All Right is a good place for what you want. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that kind of suits it. Um, yeah, because, again, it's one of those ones I won't skip. Uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave it on. And um, I thought... If the theme continued of the Ultimate Custom Night quotes, if it continued in the second verse, I thought that would have been sick, but it actually didn't. It was purely just for the first verse, which is fair. But, um... I yeah. need to move that picture so my cat doesn't rip it, but continue. <laughs> That's right. Well, we're going to move on anyway to the second song. Uh, well, the first song in the, um, the What You Want album. Uh, Stay the Course. So Stay the Course, uh, featuring CG5... Uh, very, very cool to hear him. Um, it was based on VR Help Wanted. And the, um, it's, all, it's almost, yeah, it, it seems to be referencing the conversation, the connection that William Afton makes with Vanny. That's the repeating lyric of Can You Hear Me? Like, at the very start. And, um, there's, there's also, like, it's a thing that happens, it happened, it was, like, one of those big uh, Easter egg hunts of like the source code of Scott Games and um, the, the, there was like this conversation happening between Vanny and William Afton and yeah, it was really cool and um, one of the best callbacks was actually made in the bridge literally directing calling back like directly calling back lyrics from Mangled which I thought was really really cool um, that also happened in Leave Me Behind but it was much more prominent here and I mm -hmm thought it was really cool when i first heard stay of the course um because count the teeth like count the teeth was again it was meant to be one of those last songs like i'm done that's it and then when stay of the course came out it really um like surprised me because it was right in the middle of it was right in the middle of lockdown and i was like 
oh, what, what the fuck? He's made another one? And then, like, the way it opened and it was all mysterious and spooky, I was like, oh, 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 uh, yes, let's go! And I got really hyped for it. And um, it stays on this calm tra trajectory the whole time through, because, like, the chorus picks up and then it calms down again. And then the very ending where it's just the guitar and it's just, I'm back revamped. And I was just like, ugh. Fuck. My cat loses the dice that she's playing with. Fair enough. Um, so I'll start off with uh, your opinion, Ollie. What did you think of State of the Course? I, I like it. It's, again, for me, it's like, it's like, all right, but. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I like the, I like my favorite part is honestly how it, like the end the bridge part that's my favorite part because it's like it's like a nice little like the little guitar part and then as it like builds up mm. but yeah i do I like, like i do like it but yeah it's not it's not one of my top Mm. Yeah. I like the callbacks to Mangled. Yeah. But I kind of just like Mangled. So, <laughs> like anything yeah. that calls back to Mangled, I'm like, beautiful, excellent. No, Top that's fair. <laughs> Finally, like... some good fucking food. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's alright. I'm happy with it to just be alright. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with alright as well. It's literally like. There are actually other songs in the What You Want album from different games and shit that I haven't played or anything before that I much prefer over these two songs. Um, Which one's the Bendy song? <laughs> uh, let me have a quick look. It, it actually directly calls back his um, his original Bendy Machine song. Uh, My Name Isn't Mine. Thank you. I believe that's the one. I like um, All Endings. All endings and manipulate. Those two are my favorite from that album, just by the by. Fair but uh, the whole I album to, is actually I have to pretty good. Listen to my name isn't mine because I love like Bendy and the English Sheep. So. Yeah, the, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, the whole album is pretty good, by the way. So definitely tune into that. And now we're getting into the territory where you technically say it's the oldest stuff because uh, the Ultimate Collection was kind of like that's when everyone thought, yeah. Wait. That's it. He's made an ultimate collection. It's done. So uh, we kind of we're gonna start breaching into the older territory uh, with the next song, "Count mm. the Teeth." So yeah, "Count the Teeth" mm. was one of those ones which was just like, yeah, it's another ending song, and it had some. It was kind of based on Ultimate Custom Night VR Help Wanted, and like I love the opening line of "So we all know how this will end." Like he's just kind of like getting you ready and predicting that yeah this is the way it's gonna go the main the real reference that i picked up was the line like a box without a key to find kind of referencing the locked box at the end of fnaf 4 uh. that's, kind of, that's the only real thing i got from that but a lot of it seems to be like again open interpretation for the lyrics mm. and um yeah again it was just one of those times when he tried to end it this was literally the ending of his FNAF Ultimate Collection. And, like, I'm not the big... I, I like swing songs, but, like, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of them. I, I'm comfortable with just more straight-laced rock. But, uh, but this, this, the swing nature <laughs> of the song, like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I, I, um, I like it. I think it's really good. What about you guys? It sounds fun to play. Like on the, It sounds like it would be fun to play on the guitar, like the... Sounds like it would be fun to like play on the. That's not how it would go at all. But <laughs> it just yeah, it I... sounds like it would be fun to play, and maybe I need I feel to look like... up the guitar tabs. I feel like with the opening and the chorus, you could almost like do 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 like kind of dance along to it. But then the bridge, like the verses, kind of like okay, calm down. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. Yeah, but then it, like the chorus is back into it. And I feel like yeah, he's definitely put a lot more. Um, a lot more uh, variety into his singing with this as well. Yeah, like, it like keeps well it keeps my attention. Yeah, uh, which that's is, coming from someone with ADHD. Kind of brain. That's, uh, it's fucking it's keeping an ADHD brain attentive, yeah. which is 
amazing. Like, because it so. switches up so much, I guess. It's probably why I like these kinds of songs. Anyway, I didn't really think about it before. <laughs> it's just... New revelations. Oh. What about you, Ollie? I just smacked my uh, headphones. This is, really loud. Uh, another job. one that I like. Um, out of the... Because when Ultimate Collection came out, it was like the three new songs. This one was my second favourite out of them all. And out of the th new songs i'm pretty sure when we did our original tier list i wasn't a big fan of this maybe I, I, I well not tier it. list when there's we did a, our the theme. review there's a vocaloid song that it reminds me of and i cannot like the name of it is escaping me oh. but i know but... ashi um did a cover of it and it mm. <sighs> um but yeah no it I'm pretty sure I didn't like this one at first, but listening to it however many years later, um, I like it. I enjoy it. I think uh, very good is where I'm thinking of putting it. What about you guys? Mm. Yeah, I really like it, but I'm happy for it to be very good. All right, very good it is. We got a nice block of songs here it's a top <laughs> tier very good and all right and then scrap heap is just a little tail at the bottom so yeah. sorry about that scrap heap uh next up is obsolete and i'm gonna get right into it no break i'm putting this in top tier i don't care what anyone says like yes <laughs> I, I i know ollie and i love obsolete uh i would love to get your opinion though as well Boosh. what is what do you think of obsolete I don't remember any of the really have a quick it. have a quick listen to it while I we am. gush about it it is <laughs> yes i know this one yeah it, it's it, it's again it's one of those sad dramatic songs i still want to know the opening glitchy lyrics that I what what is he saying i didn't know that this was a five nights at freddy song i'm pretty sure i just heard it and not ah oh, fair enough yeah yeah because i hear the opening glitchy lyrics and like it fucking gets me. Like, what is he saying? Like, I feel it's like I feel like he's saying, "Won't you break through? If not, like, if not, uh, uh, um, I will break you." That's what I. Th that's what my head cannon is saying. Won't yeah. you break through? If uh, not, I will break you. Lyric, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it again. Not no nowhere has those glitchy fucking words as lyrics. Nowhere reference. But there's hang no on, reference on, to it hang at on, all. Hang on, hang on. Are you listening to it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's like won't break through. Yeah. A hair break. Hmm. I, I can't. I, don't know. I, know. I can't. Anyway, yeah, yeah, it's one of the. It's one I don't of those. Know why sad... I'm like listening to it really close to my computer. I have headphones on. I can yeah, be I back here. <laughs> this is one. This is the song in the other review. Um, yeah, if you want full proper breakdowns and more musical, mu musically inclined interpretations of these songs, go listen. Go check out the Ultimate Collection review that uh, Gus, Ollie, and I did. Um, I call Ollie by a different name. Ignore that fact. Um, they're it was a now. few years ago. It was a few years now. They're Ollie now. Um, but yeah, no, it, just the sad, dramatic way of the song and the way it capt almost captures the feeling of what the end result of Five Nights at Freddy's is with the way the story goes. It almost feels like they should have, he should have, like, Nate should have just ended the album with this. Ima yeah, the, imagine that like... that and the ending of Obsolete kind of fading out and glitching yeah. away. Like, that would have been a perfect ending. Yeah, the whole like, thing. the thing I like about most is, like, is why I really love, um, when we get to it, um, Nightmare. It's, like, from the perspective of, like, all the people affected by what's happened, and it's, like, showing the pain through, like, these songs. You can, like, mm. it's like you can feel, like, the sadness and it's just it's one of my favorites i know you like sad songs at least so i knew this was one of your favorites anyway so um sorry did, did we get your opinion mission i didn't 
No. I hear it actually. Right. Sorry. Ah, there. Okay. Um, I don't think so, but I, I don't know. I didn't know it was Five Nights at Freddy's song when I heard it. I just heard it, <laughs> I think. You just came on shuffle one day and you're like, ooh. Yeah, probably. Hmm. I must have just like been playing, you know, Nate's songs on Spotify and it came on. Hmm. What do you feel about yeah. it? Do you like it? How do you feel? No, I do. I do like this song. Um, so, it sounds like one of those ones you could sing like dramatically in the shower. I'm so <laughs> in the car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like pretend yeah. you're in a music video. Like. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Just... Oh. It's music yeah. video worthy. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Like it's one of those songs that. I mean, I didn't know it was a Five Nights at Freddy's song. Um, I just liked it. So, it doesn't... Well, you don't have to be, like, a Five Nights at Freddy's fan to like this song. Exactly, yeah. Again, this, this is, uh... Yeah, like, the last three songs of the Ultimate Collection album were kind of that embodiment. Mm. Uh, but, but at least from... Uh, you count the teeth, kind of not, but yeah. Um, yeah. So, I top tier like for that. Hard. Yeah. Top tier for that, 100%. Mm -hmm, um, yes. And then the first of the new songs in the Ultimate Collection album, uh, One Way Ticket. Um, now, I don't exactly remember my opinions on One Way Ticket when we did the collection review. Um, it, again, it, it, I like, it, a lot of it feels like, yeah, I'm fucking done with this. Like, I, time and time again, I swear I'm done you created this monster, now, like, now let's have some fun. And then it gets into FNAF references. What did I write down about it? Um, okay, yeah. So there, there was a full-on thing. Uh, I don't know if it came from Reddit or where. Um, apparently Nate swore that... So Madness, again, was going to be one of his final FNAF songs. Like, Nate swore that Madness was going to be his final FNAF song. So when Ultimate Custom Night came out, it was only fitting... That a song that opens with the, like it opens with the first verse saying now time and time again I swear I'm done, and it perfectly embodies the scenario found in Ultimate Custom Night with a rumor to be William Afton's personal hell, and um, there's a few other lyrics which kind of reference that in certain ways. Um, but yeah, it's I, I tell you what though, I never like when i actively seek out Nate monster battle songs and like the fnaf songs i never go to one way ticket yeah. i've never gone to it if it comes on while it's shuffling i might skip it i don't know it just depends how i feel but i've never oh. purposely sought out it i i like it is like like uh out of the three, one, uh, not one way to get, um, Count of Teeth was my least favorite, but that grew on me. Um, so this one is technically tied with Count the Teeth out of those three. Um, and yeah, I enjoy it. I don't actively seek it out to listen to it, but I don't skip it if it comes on, because I enjoy it. I like it. I... Also, have heard this one without knowing it was a Five Nights at Freddy's song. <laughs> 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 I like it. I like that it's you know guitar heavy, um, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't like look look it up to listen to it. If it was on, I would listen to it mm. most of the time. I think is how I feel about it. Yeah, I. I, I get. <sighs> I think by the end, I get kind of bored. Yeah. Yeah, no, it. exactly. And looking at where we have things on the tier list with nothing to be where you want to say the course and all right, mm. I feel like kind of putting one way ticket and not very good. Mm. Well, if I'm, I guess so. I hate calling things that not good because like I do kind of enjoy listening to it, but at the same I, time, I'm like I'm bored by I the think end of the song. All right, but yeah, if it's majority vote. <laughs> It's major if you both think it's all right, then we'll put it in all right. But I think it's all right. Like I, don't yeah, think I, it's I bad. Like I, scrap heat would probably skip every time. But um, hmm. well, I, I, in my own opinion, I've sought out nothing to me 
but I've never sought out one way ticket. That's why mm -hmm. I just kind of the way I've put it. But majority vote, one way ticket. It's all right. Right. all right. It's all right. It's all right. And uh, okay, next up we have madness. Now, uh, madness uh, around this time when like especially with enjoy the show and madness nate seemed to have a trend with referencing the story rather than dialogue for example the first verse seemed to be talking about the plot of michael afton getting up every day to go and salvage trash animatronics and again like with everyone in fnaf i swore that this was the last time and it fucking eerily calls back to the fact that hey no one ever get, really gets away from fnaf I mean, you look at fucking Markiplier, MatPat, Dorco, Triad Ninja, and think, they want yeah. to battle. Like, everyone gets fucking brought back into it one way or another. Mm. And, like, Madness was really a fucking... Like, it really defined that part of this fandom. Like, that's the whole re I feel like that's the whole reason he made this. Like, uh, like I, every time I swear I'm done, but I keep getting brought back and, like... Ah! And it's, like mind-numbing almost like the way the way because it, it gets views it gets clicks it gets people's like it's young fans especially young fans attention so people just keep going for it and mm -hmm. yeah that's the whole point of madness but aside well, from that one of, one of the lyrics is i know this won't be my last time yeah i know i swore that this was the last time anyway I fucking yeah. love Madness. I think I do fucking mean, actually. Banger! Oh, well, Didn't know this was a Five Nights at Freddy's song. <laughs> I there you just go. It. Jesus. There you go. Yeah. Opinions, peoples. What do you think? I'm fine with it being... Uh, I really like it, so... I wouldn't be opposed to top tier, just... Mm. In my opinion. Yeah. It, it's catchy all the way through, mm. and like the instrumental. Like, and this one also, this one I, also has a little scream or whatever, but not like just one or two lines. And I think it yeah. fits really well in. Mm -mm. Like there was a point where for a while I stopped listening to Nate, and then I heard this one, and it drew me back into Nate. Mm. Yeah. So, like I would listen. I had him on like, like Spotify and all that, but it just. But, like, I'm listening to it now and the bridge just come on and I'm like, oh, I love, like, the bridge. The way it just sits. Mm. It builds perfectly. It's yeah. so well made and, like, everything has a place there. And even, like, that bit where they're, like, it slows down a bit. The lyrics are overlapping yeah. each other just before the final chorus. Yeah. Like, um, it yeah, just, and it, oh, it has, yeah. Chills. I feel like mad madness going in top tier is yeah. definitely For sure. a good shout there. Yeah. And um yeah. And yeah, I'm more than happy with that. Next up we have Enjoy the Show featuring Jack Septicai, but not this really. This was <laughs> I think the first Five Nights at Freddy's song that I listened to that I knew was Five Nights at Freddy's. I vibe, same. It was like the one it was the one that got me into Nate and it still to this day is one of my favorites. Just uh, top like, tier. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm happy with that. But like, um, yeah, and, and it's definitely central. Like, it's whereas a lot of other FNAF songs can just be like broad and ambiguous. This one, yeah. like being 100 percent focused oh. on sister location, made me really happy. Like the intro yeah. of Nate and Jack seeming to introduce us to a circus. And mm -hmm. like the theme and the characters mm -hmm. and like almost the circus. So much, like, the, the one the, thing I don't like about it is I wish there was more Jack in it. That's what a lot of people that said. That's cool. what, yeah. So, it so would many been made it really like a lot better, but Maybe at the Jack end of the day, sing, and that's why he's not in it. I don't know. I know. I remember. I literally remember when it came out, so many of the comments were like, oh, but where's Jack? I didn't hear Jack. And then everyone's just like, he was in the intro. Yeah. Like, oh, but no, oh, I... like, he didn't sing. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that is, it is kind of misleading. Yeah. It is kind of misleading him putting him as a featured artist when he's just... In the intro. It's, it's not even a part, it's not even a singing role. He's... Yeah. You can't, you can't say that's singing, but yeah. Um... 
Yeah, and the chorus in the second verse do call back a few lines from Circus Baby slash Ennard, like the whole, like, I'll be your friend, you can trust me, like, all Till that sort end. of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not opposed to top tier. If I, you guys... top tier. I love it. So this is one of my favorite Nate songs, I reckon. I'm very it's happy. Just... You, yeah. You all concur. And like, I know it's also one of Gus's favorites because it's literally the song, like, he got most requested to do an instrumental love. Yeah. And I think that's why he, and also he got requested a lot to do, like, uh, a making of stream. So he literally did, has a giant stream, I don't know if it's still up, of him making an instrumental version of the song. And it's really, really good. Cool. Um, all right. Now, continu- continuing to work backwards, uh, uh-huh. we have another, another one of the ending songs, uh, the finale. Uh. And... I like, uh, like, I, initially I didn't care for the finale, like, uh, when I first, like, I reckon during Ultimate Collection album review, I even said I don't really care for it, but now I get fucking hooked at the fucking chorus, it's, like, fucking fab, that's, like, oh, it's I love just it. a very, like, like, you can tell I just, he's having fun with these songs, yeah, yeah, like, whereas, um, you can tell, I didn't say before, but realizing, you can tell, like, around here, he's having fun with it. And then yeah. it feels like after um, Count the Teeth and that, uh, Stay the Course and What You Want felt like his heart really wasn't in, in it. it. Yeah. yeah. And, then, like... and then the Scrap Heap album now, he's just like, you can feel he's a little bit in it with some of the songs. Not as I, much I, as but like not these, as much like as ir- these ones. Like yeah, I, I feel like Scrap Heap was just like okay. I know, I know this is the proper ending. I'm gonna go out with a bang. So yeah. he put in a lot of effort to like, it. There are a couple and... of bangers in Scrap Heap, but like yeah, I still feel like these are better. Oh yeah, yeah. the the, the, ori- the original musically whatever, but you can just tell like he's this really is, passionate about this. Was yeah. one of my favorites for a very long time because mm. like just the way it like jumps between like the different games, but also like different sounds. So, yeah, like, you get the start of it how it's like no more, and then it goes to mangled, and then salvaged. And then this is the end. The, the, that's it. Was it? So yeah, cool. it, 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 yeah. The finale. That's it. It references all of his previous FNAF songs. Mm. Like, yeah, that's right. I forgot. This is the one that did that. And yeah. it like flows all cohesively and all that. Mm. Mm. Like it's yeah. not just a well, if not it, it, if not the FNAF songs, more so the story of the first four games. But in turn, that references lyrics of the mm. older songs he made. Yeah. So, like, a- again, like, it's not, I, it took me a long time to get to really enjoying the song, and I feel like you're right, Mish, like, the, with the original line of songs he made, he was a lot, he was a lot more inspired and a lot more, like, like into it. you can hear it in his voice. Like, he's just... He's having fun. Yeah, he's having fun. And, like, all the different, like, instrumental bits and pieces, and, like... yeah. Yeah, he's just, uh, you know... I, I was initially going to put this in very good, but I feel like the overwhelming consensus is going to put it in top tier. Put and you know what? I'm, it in top I'm, tier, Trent. I'm, hap- I'm happy with that as well, you know? Yeah. Like, like uh, just, to- just, just talking yeah. about it and what it does is, yeah. But, like, I'm, I'm listening to it now, so, like, yeah, it's coming on and I'm like, oh. Fair yeah. enough. I don't have the lyrics and, up anymore. I know all these lyrics. I don't need to look them up. <laughs> Yeah. But, and yeah. Next up, we have uh, "This Is the End." I need to double check this is the end because it's again, it's one of those ones I'm really. Yeah. Okay. This is the one where you're know, like, oh, oh I this found is the you. one I think I skip every time. <laughs> oh. Because I don't like the start. I don't know. The last time I listened to the whole song. Yeah. I'm paying yes. attention. It's taken me a long time to actually like this song. Yeah, I like uh, I I like the sound of or is it just no 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 literally I think it's literally just the opening and maybe a bit towards. I don't the know end. if I've ever gotten past the opening. Yeah, 
Yeah, like, like get get to the chorus because the chorus uh, is pretty cool. Wait, no. I hear yeah. them roaming. Yeah, no, I have. I, I do have like this song, but I don't door. like the start. I don't like the yeah. stream at the start. Yeah, neither. Like, but yeah, it, it's it get... taken me a very long time to like this song. I used to skip it a lot. So like, thing, I enjoyed like, I, the chorus. I onwards. I think this is a song that I like. And I'll listen to when it comes on if I haven't paid attention that it's like the Screamo opening song. Because mm. apparently yeah. I know all the words. Like the, the song's happening, yeah. I'm like, oh, I know these words. So I must listen to it, just not when I've listened to it from the beginning. Mm. Yeah. No, for me, like, yeah, it, I can, I like it. I like the sound, but even like when it gets to the chorus, like, I hear them roaming. Like, mm. it, I've heard him sing better than that. Like, it sounds good, but it sounds a little bit amateurish. Amateurish. Mm. Like, this, 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 he's singing the whole way with how painful his screaming sounds and how average yeah. the rest of it sounds. Like, the instrumental is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. For me, I'm thinking all right or not very good. I'm thinking all right. Yeah. The start is rough, but I enjoy the rest of the song. Mm. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's not good. I'm not a fan of the I'm not a fan of the ending where it's just him screaming, "This is the end." I don't like. It. Oh, yeah. okay. I haven't got to the end in my reading. Like it, 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 if it, it, like if it's a horror film with metal music in it, then that kind of works. But no, it's Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, uh, okay. No, I actually don't mind the ending. The ending just kind of came on now. I don't really mind the ending as much. It's the beginning. Okay. The beginning is really what puts me off. Fair enough. Next up, we have Home. Um, I'll let you guys discuss this. I have literally no opinions of Home. <laughs> I don't... I need to... I... Um, this is going to be a bit shocking, but this is the one I skip a lot. I, I'm trying to remember how I have a very similar opinion again like with one way ticket I don't seek out home because it's mm. it's one I of those ones that's trying to be sad but it doesn't yeah. actually get there for me yeah it it feels like he I think we even said the same thing when it when we did the rev collection review it doesn't know maybe it doesn't know what it wants to be like yeah. it, it's just kind of weird yeah to me like i like the start but mm. when it gets to the chorus like that's i'm listening to it now mm. uh that's what i don't like the most about it like i i like the lyrics itself but i just i don't know for some reason this isn't just it's not one of my favorites and i skip this song a lot yeah me which too. is surprising I... for me no, I, I actually I'm... like this song. <laughs> I don't... Oh, fair enough. I like it, um, but I don't like it at the same time. It's it's hard to explain. Yeah, like you you're very accurate. Like the lyrics are cool. Like the lyrics make sense, but like just the way the song progresses. Mm. Like it sounds like it's being sad, and then after the chorus, the instrumental starts to pick up. And then the lyrics are the same, and it's like, this, this is strange. Like, mm. yeah, I'm not a fan of Home. Yeah. I like it, but I don't like it, so I'm happy for it to go alright. Because, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Mushi? I like this song, but um, I think I kind of assumed it was an anime song, so... <laughs> <laughs> this, this would work better as an anime song, you're right. Because I've got, like... <laughs> So when I've listened to Nate before, I just like it. Like, I don't watch Steven Universe, but I love his covers of a couple of the songs. Same with Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't really like Five Nights at Freddy's. Mostly because I don't like animatronics. And his cover the, of Let Me Try is cool. I hearing about it all the time, too, I'm going to be honest. I'm sorry! Fair enough, fair enough. Um, it wasn't just you. It was also, like, everywhere on the internet for a long time. I know. Um... I think I, yeah, like when I've listened to Nate, I think I probably just assumed this was like an anime song 
or from like a that, show that I haven't seen. That almost I don't makes too much sense. No, if I thought of Five Nights at Freddy's, I... maybe after someone, I, like I knew it was Five Nights at Freddy's songs, but I think someone told me that. I think I just assumed it was a Five Nights at Freddy's song. I really, really want to put this in not very good. I'm just. I don't care for it at all. I'm okay like, with that. I don't have a strong like, opinion on this song. Like, like if it's on, I'll listen to it, but... Like, I, I almost definitely listen to Scrap Heap more, and that's just because it's metal. Like, Home is just on a weird bridge of, like, rock and mm. pop and trying to be sad, and it's not any of that. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um... Next up, we have Nightmare. Nightmare. I like this one. Um, I love this one. I think I like. I think I like the acoustic more than the original. Yes, with this the one. The acoustic made it so much better, but I still absolutely love. Like, I don't skip the non acoustic, but the acoustic just made it a thousand times better for See, it, in my opinion. I like this one, but I'm not sure I would put it in top tier. <laughs> See, night, Nightmare for me, I do have to be in a certain mood to listen to it, Yeah. but whenever I do put it on, I'm really fucking keen, like, I'm mm. like, yeah, because it builds really good, mm. and then, like, acoustic, I'm not always in the mood for acoustic music, and, like, the Nightmare acoustic almost makes me a little bit sad, in a good way, yeah. so I don't <laughs> always I'm, have it on. I'm pretty but, sure I said this in the Ultimate Customer Night review, but, like... This was like, I, one of the other reasons I really like this, it was a big change to every other song Nate had came out with. Like, he hadn't actually released anything similar to Nightmare until he released it. And, like, comparing it to the first few, where it's like, it is all still rocky, but, like, it's... It's got a different feel to it, mm. and then, mm. yeah, the acoustic, it's just... I love it. <laughs> I think I definitely like the acoustic more than... Like, oh, I like yeah. the original, but I think I definitely like the acoustic more, but yeah. I would just put it in very good, because I'm the same as Trent. I kind of have to be in the right mood to listen to it. I, I think consensus here is very good. I know very you good. love this I am song, fine really. with very good. But I think, yeah, I think very good suits it very well. Mm -hmm. Um... All right, we're getting close to the end, ladies and gentlemen. Um, next up, oh man, my playlist has gotten a lot more likes since the album came out. That's awesome. Um, we are now up to Salvaged, one of the OGs. Man, I still remember the first time I heard this, and the piano intro caught me really off guard. But then the glitchy voice of like, um, mm -hmm. it's been years, and like the glitchy lyrics like i was like oh wait this is sick and then i realized oh yeah it's fnaf 3 and um yeah no it, it's fucking good uh like I, these songs were really good i agree it's one of it's one of my favorite songs as well as the acoustic version of salvaged as well because the acoustic version is just i love it um because mm -hmm. it's it, like most, of the, like, when it comes to No More and Mangled, their acoustic covers, I am not a fan of those two. But Salvaged and Nightmare, I like the acoustic. I the only acoustic I'm really a fan of is Nightmare. The others don't really do anything for me. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, it's just... I like this one a lot. And it's one of my favourites. Yeah, I, I like the... The simplicity of it, and like mm. how it starts off the glitchy lyrics, mm -hmm. and then it builds into the first verse where it repeats those lyrics, and yeah, the co the chorus slaps as well. And yeah, this is another one that you can tell he had a lot of fun. Yeah, because of that. Like, that's because th th this is when he first started changes. making them. Yeah. Like this yeah. is this is obviously a Five Nights at Freddy's song. Um, but like, I feel like you don't have to be like a huge like FNAF fan to enjoy it. Like, I really like this song. Yeah. Um, it's like it's. 
it's from the animatronics point of view, isn't it? it yes. Well, because it's FNAF Fine. 3, it's, and there's only one animatronic in FNAF 3, it's purely from Springtrap. Oh, yes. okay. Uh, this makes me this makes me feel like if uh, Always Come Back had more references, <laughs> yeah, like like to salvage, that would have been interesting, but it didn't. I love that. I think it's cool. the bridge. I don't have the lyrics up, so I don't know exactly if it's the bridge, but it's like where the no happy endings will ever find you, and it's like overlapping. Mm. Mm. Oh, I love these ghosts are deep inside you. A from deep inside Trent. Trent, I have you got ghosts deep inside, deep inside you? Let me look at the lyrics, bro. I'm listening to it <laughs> right now. Anyway, um, but um, yeah, no. All of these ghosts, they're from deep inside you. Yeah, you said are deep inside you. Oh, I thought I was <laughs> from. never mind. Um, I think this belongs in very good, personally. Personally, very mm. good. I I good. think top tier, but you do. I'm you somewhere do. between top tier and very you, good. You do. I don't... You do. <sighs> God. I don't always listen to it, but I do enjoy it. Like whenever I when I do listen to it. Yes, I am. Um So that's why I think it should go and talk to you. <laughs> I'm happy for very good or top tier, like either or is fine with me. <laughs> Rock paper scissors turn. Alright. Okay, on. go. <laughs> Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh ah, my god, I, I didn't know you were gonna do shoot. Redo. Okay. Are you going on shoot? Rock, Rock, scissors. On shoot. Okay. Rock, Keep your hand in frame, don't cheat. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Trent wins. Trent Get wins. wrecked. Very good. <laughs> we're near the ending, ladies and gentlemen. No more. Ooh, you like can't one. break down my lights on my doors. No, again, no. it's again, it's not one I actively seek out, but it's very catchy. I, <laughs> it is catchy. I love it. Like every time this it, is... it's not. You're right. It's not when I look up, but whenever it comes on, I'm like, oh my god, I actually love this song. But then yeah. I forget about yeah. it for months, and then it comes on, and again, I'm like. Yes. Exactly. Like, it comes back on, I'm like, oh yeah. And then, like, oh, the guitar fucking. Yeah. Goes hard. Mm. Oh. My god. And then, yeah, no, I always find myself singing to it. Five nights, it should yeah. seem so loud. Yeah. I mean, like, again, and, and, and the acoustic, I don't really have an opinion on, but, like, it's. I didn't. I forgot this had an acoustic. I like. Yeah, the it's so. It's just so surprising. It just catches me off guard. Like, mm. oh wait, this is actually really <gasps> good. And then in the bit oh, that, where later it's like, then maybe one day. Yeah, that that's where humanity. that's where the, the lyric first came in. That's yeah, where he first did that. Yeah. Like that that this is what I expected with home. I thought home was gonna get better like this, but it just didn't. Mm. And that mm. and that's why like mm. no no more. What do you guys think? I like that it's like, yeah, top tier. I like that it's like a story song as well. It's not just references, yeah. it's a story. Yeah. No, I, I'll agree. Top tier. Yeah. I, I'm happy with that. And like, and that that was the weird thing as well because um, he, his first song was Mangled, and then it was based, and that was based on FNAF two, and then he made No More, which was based on FNAF one. No More I guess was it, actually. It wasn't based on FNAF one. It was. Yeah, I remember when it came out, it was one that could be interpreted between both games. Okay. It wasn't just uh, specifically, because I remember someone asking him in the comments and he was just like, nah, it's either or, really, it doesn't matter. Oh, fair enough. Most of the lyrics to this song aren't necessarily like specific to Five Nights at Freddy's. Obviously, when it's like, you know... Yeah, no, no, because no, like, like, when he says... says when he's talking about it, getting, but even then, that could be like a double meaning kind of thing. Because I know it's Five yeah. Nights at Freddy's. I think you know the animatronic suit, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it could be. You could argue that it could mean other things if you don't know it's Five Nights at Freddy's. Because mm. it's talking about you know routines and. Yeah. No, that's that's mm. fair enough. Um. Yeah. No. No more is. A surprising banger. Yeah. 
That's all we can say, and I'm, I'm more than happy for it to go into the top tier. I just, and, I love the end too. Just the maybe you wonder, yeah. Just yeah, the way and, that like, and, it, and it echoes, echoes out, yeah. And just, yeah. Really good. Last but not least, mangled this. Mangled this. This is my favorite. So much. You guys, you guys go first. You guys like, go first. I like, like, I like the original version of mangled. And then when he came out with the revamped version, I was just like, yes. I like. Oh, I listened to I like, it very much. Maybe. Yeah. Oh. I like both versions. But yeah, as soon as it got revamped, and like, mm-hmm. I love the whole, like, when the video dropped, the whole opening thing of um, him torturing the fuck out of Matt. Yeah, oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah. Hold on, you guys keep talking. I'll be right back. I need to go do something very quickly. I'll oh my be god, right Trent. Back. You guys keep talking. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know what to talk about now that Trent's gone. <laughs> uh, the fact that Trent is gay. <laughs> Trent is gay. Trent is gay. Oh Trent my is god. gay. He's going to have fun editing. Trent is gay. He's just gonna cut you out. He's just gonna cut it yeah, out. No. <laughs> yeah, no, he's just gonna go from where um, he's gotten up. Or he'll listen to it because he thinks we're talking about Mangle. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, it's just you teasing him again. Yes. If he listens to it. Sorry about that. Okay. Trent is gay. You're good. You did it again. Nothing, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna, nothing worthwhile I'm gonna cut, was said. No, I'm going to cut all that out. Okay. <laughs> um, so, hot take. Mm. I'm bored of Mangle. Hot take. I've, Your opinion hot, doesn't matter. <laughs> I've heard it so many times. I've just gotten bored of it. I get what you mean. But I haven't listened to it for a while. So, like, I'm still... I still really yeah. like it. I don't know why this one is like my favorite of them all. I reckon. Just Every time, like I hear I "We're back, to. revamped," um, and I'm like, "Yep, yeah. we're back, yeah. revamped." Yeah, Please let back. the madness end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's fun to sing along to. Yeah. Fair enough. Nah, uh, like for me, like it's dropped definitely since last time we I talked about Nate's music. Mm. It'll probably drop to like alright for me, but I'm sure you guys would want it elsewhere. I'm to. happy to put it in very good as like a yes, middle ground. Same. Very good? Yeah, very all good. Alright. I- I'm comfortable with that. I'm mm. happy with that. Yeah, it's just over the years, like the acoustics are alright, it's fine. The original really version like was the cool. Acoustic. Fair enough. The original version was cool, like, because he actually produced that entirely himself as well. And it has mm-hmm. its own unique sound, which I appreciate mm. and was cool. Yeah. And um, then, then the revamped, yeah, Next Level was like, yeah. oh yeah, this is fucking sick. And yeah, him torturing Matt Pat was a lot of fun as well. Exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, just over, over time, as he's made more music, every time I've heard Mangled again, I just, I'm like, oh, but this... There's better stuff I could hear. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just every time every time it comes on, I think oh, there could I could be listening to a different one. Like <laughs> it's just over time, it's kind of just gone mm. stale. That's it's like fair. it's aged like McDonald's chicken nugget, which doesn't really age that mm. good. It <laughs> takes several years. See, yeah, I um, heard the say it's aged like fine milk. <laughs> That, like that, it's not it's not like milk for me like it's no? not sour it's not sour it's just bread there you go bread. <laughs> there you go it's mangled as bread um but i'm happy with very good it does have its place it's being his first song it has its place and it really kickstart everything mm, that yes. is about man wants to battle so yeah that's absolutely fair and there we go. Th- this is the finalized tier list, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the tier list is on tier list maker as as everything. I'm probably not going to share it. My um, my Discord thing went off, and that's probably going to be picked up by OBS. Thanks to whoever fucking did that. I thought I turned I that to off. Do it again. I'm sorry. No, please I, don't. I no. Know. 
Fuck. <laughs> Leave it alone. Um, so this is the final, the final tier list. We have nothing in the bottom tier. Uh, in not very good, we have scrap heap and home. Mm. On all right, like uh, are we comfortable with those there? They are all good in that position. Mm. Yep. 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 And all right, we have nothing to me. What you want? Stay the course. One way ticket, and this is the end. Any objections to those positions? No. No. Nope. And very good. We have leave me behind. Nothing left to want. Count the teeth. Nightmare salvaged and mangled. But I want to come back to leave me behind because we weren't sure if we wanted to put that one in the top tier when we oh. first started. Okay. Yeah. What do we think now? I let me listen to it again. I just put it on again, but because it was I... the first song, we weren't sure where if we wanted it in top tier or not. I think it is really cool with how it, it it's a big reference to everything. It's a good send off, but I I love the chorus. I love the way the way he goes fucking ham in the chorus, but, I don't know, I, hmm. maybe top two? I'm happy for it to go up to top yeah, two. Yeah, I'm listening to it again, I'm like, yeah, I'm happy to bump it back up. Because, again, it, it's one of those dramatic weight songs, but for a different reason, because this is mm. the end, this is like mm. the actual end. It, He's fucking going for it in its entirety, so... Yeah, oh, okay, I'm happy to move it up, and, um... Yeah, the top tier definitely outweighs the rest of the tier list. We have a lot of songs there. We have... Leave Me Behind, Always Come Back, Time to Move On, To My Grave, Obsolete, Madness, Enjoy the Show, The Finale, and No More. My god, what a list. <laughs> We're um, very opinionated. We are, and I'm surprised that four of the newer songs made it to top tier. Like I, that, hmm. because you you guys told me that you hadn't heard the newer songs. I don't know if that's just recency bias, but like when when you guys mentioned that, I was like, wow, that's fucking awesome. And like a lot of the new ones have been absolute bangers. I have thought they were absolutely awesome. Moosh is dying. <laughs> it hurt my spit. I'm sorry. I it's inhaled right. to say something. Um, it's all right. I was gonna say, I don't right. think it's like the new listening thing. I think they just have this sound that I love when it comes yeah. to music. And yeah. so these are songs that I would come back to. I may have added one to my favorites playlist. I can't remember what one, but added it to my favorites playlist uh, while we were recording this. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Hmm. Well, if you guys uh, have your own opinions on the tier list, uh, and your own opinions on the songs you want to share, leave them in the comments down below, and I will plug everything that I mentioned before. Um, on Firestorm, Gus and I have played Security Breach in an hour video, in a, then in a five hour redemption video actually getting an ending. We did a podcast talking about it. Um, Gus, uh, Ollie and I did an ultimate collection, like, um, review on my channel as well. I've played Sister Location as well. And um, you'll find these two links to their... Uh, what do you want plugged? Twitches and Twitters and nor Instagrams? What do you want plugged? I have to get back to you on that. I have to figure out what I actually use still. <laughs> mine mine All right. would be my Twitch. Yes, uh, I'll use Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to see more of us and our shenanigans, we are part of the group uh, Chaotic Squishies uh, currently. Yeah. Uh, and we are currently in a D&D uh, &D 5e campaign, Legend of the Witching Dragon, run by Ollie. Um, at the time of recording, that's what is, is happening. And um, yes, you'll mm. find us, more of us in our shenanigans there. Uh, Ollie on Twitch and Twitter as Sir Tamachi. Um, Moosh as Moodle the Noodle, or various Everything. locations. <laughs> uh, wherever wherever they want plugged. I'm not plugging everything. <laughs> like, two. Um, I have two. a link tree. I'll send you my link or tree. Or send me the link tree. That perfect um, link tree. I'm Moodle the Noodle on, like, everything. So just look that up and you'll find me. 
Yeah. I'm also, yep, and care of Squishies as well. I'm also part of <laughs> Firestorm. Um, we're hopefully going to get back into some content soon. Um, but Gus is also going to be moving at the start of 2023. So that's going to also uh, make a little bit of, more of a gap. So hopefully coming in November or December, we'll have some videos for you guys. It just depends. And um, yeah, find me everywhere mentioned. And um, this was a big thank you love letter to Nay Wants to Battle. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Your music and your content is amazing. And we'll be looking forward to whatever you decide to create next outside of fandom stuff. Because we love your original stuff as well. No like, doubt about it. Come to Australia. <laughs> please. <laughs> come to Australia. Please. We would appreciate it. We really dearly. would. <laughs> Alright. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. We'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.